My, uh, my pronouns are he, him, and this is my very first recorded lecture uh, without uh, students. Uh, so I've got some emotional support. Hello there, <laughs> I miss you. So I'm sorry I had to miss class on, uh, on, on Wednesday. So I hope that's not going to be, um, yeah. So I guess the good thing uh, about teaching without students is that uh, it, it seems it might be harder to get carried away. <laughs> so. Uh, 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 let, me get, uh, let me get started. So again, this is lecture 13. We're getting, we're setting everything up uh, for the uh, solution after uh, Jesse Douglas of the plateau problem, uh, the existence uh, of uh, soap films spanning a given uh, boundary uh, in Euclidean space. So let me just recall. Uh, there's a basic setup that we that we have. Uh, so at this point of the class, we are looking at uh, uh, maps uh, that are uh, continuous up to the boundary on the Euclidean side, mapping, in, uh, mapping into the Euclidean space, and uh, at least once differentiable uh, on uh, the imperial of this. So again, V is the notation uh, of a unit disk, so those points uh, whose uh, distance from the origin Such maps uh, we associate uh, two quantities with it. Uh, so first is uh, what we call the area of the map, and it, it would be the area if phi is an immersion, then it would be the area associated with uh, the immersion. Uh, so that is given by uh, the integral uh, over uh, the disk of uh, the following quantity. So that is the first. Uh, mm -hmm. So the first partial of phi squared. Second partial of phi uh, squared, take the product of these two quantities uh, and subtract the scalar product uh, of these partials, uh, quantity squared, and take the square root of it. So they would give uh, the area uh, of the immersion, if it were an immersion in general, uh, you know, this quantity A of phi, which we also call uh, the area of the map phi. And just recall that what this quantity is, it's the determinant of uh, uh, the matrix, um, uh, the matrix obtained by, um, um, yeah, so it's uh, the determinant of the following quantity. Jacobian matrix, matrix of first derivative, so uh, this map phi uh, and uh, its um, frame space uh, and uh, multiply them uh, together. So that's the area of phi, and um, 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 then there's a second quantity that we'll be looking at. It's energy of phi, uh, so that uh, energy of phi is given by half uh, of the integral of v uh, of uh, the length of the first partials of phi squared uh, plus the length of the second partials of phi squared. So it's uh, the sum of the Dirichlet energies uh, of the components of uh, so something that follows uh, from Cauchy Schwarz and uh, what it's useful uh, is that uh, uh, the area of phi is always bounded by, by the energy of phi. And uh, let me uh, recall uh, straight away that uh, 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 equality here holds uh, if and only if phi is a weak, uh, is weakly conformal, meaning this quantity here uh, vanishes and these quantities here are equal. So uh, something that uh, is important to, uh, to observe is that uh, uh, suppose I have a diffeomorphism uh, psi 
of the unit is the smoothing uh, from the closed unit is uh, with smooth uh, inverse, then uh, uh, the area uh, of phi is equal to the area of phi following it. So if I pre-compose, if I re-parameter the epithet, if it's an immersion, you would call phi following psi uh, a reparameterization of that immersion. Uh, so um, yeah, it's just an invariance by pre-composition of this diffeomorphism uh, in the areas uh, invariant under such pre-composition. So it's just a change of variables formula. Uh, and by and it's this uh, conformal, uh, it's this invariance uh, uh, with respect to reparameterizations with respect to precomposition uh, with diffeomorphisms that uh, you know that's part of the heading you know, when they're thinking about uh, area maps of least area spanning a given boundary might be because if you have any uh, map that minimizes area with a, a given uh, with given boundary data um, then any precomposition by diffeomorphism would uh, also be such a minimizer and uh, there just so many diffeomorphisms general diffeomorphisms diffeomorphisms of the unit disk, it's a non-contact uh, group, uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, that's a headache that, that we need to be aware of, uh, and uh, second, uh, uh, Energy is invariant with respect to precomposition with a particular class of diffeomorphisms. Uh, uh, however, Scalar multiple of the identity matrix at every point where the multiple can vary uh, from point to point. So uh, uh, it's uh, great. Let me uh, just remind you of something you know about conformal diffeomorphisms uh, of the unit disk. Uh, uh, so there are not so many of them, uh, certainly many fewer <laughs> in, a, in a very substantial way than there are. General diffeomorphisms uh, of the unit disk. So, this is a lemma. I am an Amandus Schwarz, Schwarz. So, the angle preserving and orientation preserving diffeomorphisms of the unit disks are classified. So, uh, uh, every orientation uh, preserving angle preserving Fractional uh, uh, holomorphic map, so not uh, okay. Let me just say uh, where 
outside of the unit disk, so uh, it's actually a holomorphic net uh, on the unit disk up to me including uh, the boundary in a little bit. Uh, and uh, you, you can check that, uh, you know, just by taking absolute values, um, computing absolute values, uh, the modulus of the right-hand side, that uh, the uh, boundary uh, of uh, uh, the unit disk, so the unit circle, uh, is uh, mapped uh, into uh, itself, and from that it's not easy, not difficult to check. Uh, then, uh, uh, well, to check, I mean, I guess you can just draw the general principles on it that this must be a diffeomorphism. Um, then, uh, in the, uh, so notice also uh, that uh, the point A, the special point A, is mapped to uh, the origin, uh, this e to the i theta, this affects. Uh, these are rotations, right, by the angle theta. In terms of when you know, fix theta, uh, you know, to the interval zero pi with a zero or two, uh, sorry, zero two pi, two pi not included, uh, then um, you know you you know this is a, a bijection uh, from uh, so that uh, interval zero two pi, two pi not included uh, across uh, the unit disk uh, with. Uh, uh, the collection of all conformal orientation preserving uh, diffeomorphisms of the unit disk. So there's a, so, and, uh, you know, if you, so these are exactly the diffeomorphisms, well, exactly, so if you pre-compose uh, uh, a map phi with any, uh, with, his, uh, with any of these diffeomorphisms, energy doesn't change, area doesn't change uh, anyway, right, uh, that would require the uh, so there is a um, uh, um, uh, there is a remark uh, that uh, will be useful uh, later. So suppose that uh, a W one a zero W one and W two Circle. So these are distinct and ordered counterclockwise. Ordered counterclockwise. So we are traversing uh, the circle uh, uh, with uh, its usual orientation, starting at omega zero. I first meet. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. W zero. I first meet W one. Uh, so, in such a configuration, there exists a unique psi as above, such that uh, when uh, you know, there are three points uh, on the unit circle uh, that are uh, whose image uh, can be described. It's an easy, well, an easy, it's a healthy exercise uh, in, in complex analysis if you don't remember uh, this result or you can easily derive it or uh, come and ask questions. So uh, now I would like to uh, think about nets that are. Uh, so uh, I've already uh, explained uh, in previous lectures. Uh, that in order to solve the plateau problem, where uh, Pon is looking for minimizers of area, uh, it, it has been historically uh, one blast of an idea uh, to, uh, to recognize that one uh, finds these minimizers, can find these minimizers of area by looking for minimizers of energy. 
So energy is a larger function, it dominates the area function, and uh, something that, uh, that you know, uh, maybe it's has shown in the course of a, a long time period with the uh, last pieces uh, filled in uh, by JC Atlas in absolutely outstanding seminal work. He feels many work as an adult fit. Um, Um, is, is to recognize that minimizers uh, of energy are uh, harmonic and they are weakly uh, conformal and uh, um, uh, maps that are weakly conformal and harmonic are where they are uh, immersions so where you know, weakly conformal means that uh, the Jacobian may vanish it turns out um, you know, when you're weakly conformal and harmonic the Jacobian can only vanish uh, in, uh, at isolated points, and uh, away from these points you are in immersion, and in fact you are minimal immersion, your uh, mean curvature vanishes, that is the uh, Weierstrass lemma. But let me get back uh, to that uh, later in the lecture, or maybe the next lecture, the last lecture. So for now, I, I care to uh, settle the analysis. Uh, so let's uh, let's um, uh, so let me put down the lemma. So suppose uh, I have an empty file that is continuous, closed unit is to R n and uh, uh, C one uh, on the inside. Assume that uh, uh, I have a map psi that is uh, um, uh, say compactly supported uh, on uh, R two R n. Um, so one thing that I can, uh, oh, you know, yeah, I mean it really doesn't matter so much, but let's just say a smooth map on all of R two into R n. Uh, in, uh, uh, one thing that we can do is uh, we can consider uh, we can consider uh, the maps uh, phi t from uh, d bar uh, to r n uh, that are given uh, the same an element uh, z of uh, uh, the unit disk uh, to uh, uh, phi of z. general uh, 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 making and uh, something that is true uh, is uh, that then um, you know what you can do is you can look at uh, the uh, energy of these maps phi t uh, as a function of this uh, parameter uh, t so this is for in R, and it turns out what you obtain is uh, yeah, okay. so if the energy of phi is finite, so this is finite, then the energy of this maps phi t will be finite all the time, uh, and you can uh, yeah, I can just manipulate this just uh, so there's no confusion. Uh, then you you know this map uh, is differentiable. Simply it's smooth as a function of t, and the derivative uh, at t is equal to zero is, uh, and then not surprisingly, partial bond phi, uh, partial bond psi, uh, uh, partial bond um, psi plus uh, partial bond phi, partial bond uh, two psi. And corollary, as a, so this is a, just a simple computation, it's exactly the same. Yeah, it's always the same computations. Uh, so there's a corollary that is really new. So if this quantity here
for assume that this quantity here uh, is zero uh, for all uh, such smooth uh, vector fields on R2 uh, with uh, support in the unit disk. So, in particular, Xi vanishes on the unit circle. Uh, then it follows uh, uh, that Xi um, that, uh, is uh, smooth in the interior. So by uh, Weiss uh, fit, uh, so you know xi is, uh, phi and xi are made up of n functions each, uh, the components. And one thing I can do is I can choose particular uh, vector fields, um, for example, vector fields of the form, uh, you know, where the second up to the, the last component n, they all vanish and only the first component uh, is non-vanishing the sum completely supported function. Then, when using uh, these uh, vector fields, fields uh, you know, form these families of, uh, uh, of maps and they compute the derivative of energy at t is equal to zero, um, in this expression I would get partial one, right? Uh, this is a scalar product. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the right, uh, the vector field on the right only has no uh, non vanishing entry, and it, it, it would be that. Uh, the first, the first component, uh, and it will be partial one of the first component of xi, uh, multiplying, in, you know, this being a, a scalar product, the first partial of the first component of phi. Yeah. And uh, same here, partial to phi uh, one times partial to uh, xi one. So uh, if you think about it. Uh, if uh, you know what, what this means is uh, almost on the nose that uh, uh, you can uh, uh, integrate by parts here, xi being uh, compactly supported, uh, to obtain uh, that phi one, then minus phi one times uh, partial one, partial one of xi one plus phi 1, uh, partial one uh, 2 partial uh, 2 psi 1, uh, the that integrates to 0. So there are the two minuses that I'm uh, picking up uh, irrelevant because uh, uh, the quantity is 0. So mm -hmm. that just means that uh, psi, uh, the phi 1 is weakly uh, harmonic uh, in the sense of the lemma of phi, phi uh, the lemma that we're using. Uh, so phi is a harmonic, uh, a smooth representative, and it is harmonic, and you can do that for all the components. So, so such nets are, 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 are smooth and they are harmonic. So notice, um, if you if you have if you had found a, a map phi of this build uh, that has given boundary values, that is a minimizer uh, of energy among all, all maps uh, having that boundary data. Well, then this would mean that uh, uh, you know, energy uh, has a local minimum at t is equal to zero along any such family, uh, uh, along any such family uh, where psi is uh, completely supported in t. So for any such minimizer of energy, you would know uh, that it is uh, like smooth So now the second lemma is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know of a pretty of a similar uh, similar build uh, and uh, 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 right it goes as follows. Uh, so suppose I have a map phi that is uh, continuous um, uh, up to the boundary and I'm actually I'm going to make life a little easier for myself 
uh, just a mistake. Why? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so A. such that uh, x1, x2, scalar product, the value of x, x1, and x2 is equal to 0 uh, uh, when x1 and x2 are on the unit circle. Uh, so, you know, it means it means that the value of this vector field x stands perpendicular position at any point uh, of the unit circle. Um, so uh, any such uh, vector field uh, generates inside the unit disk, then they stay there. If they ever find themselves outside of the unit disk, then they stay there. If they ever find themselves on the boundary, uh, they, uh, they, they, stay, they stay there. Uh, okay, uh, so a family of diffeomorphisms is generated by X. Um, uh, then if we compute, we can again, so it turns out, uh, obtain a differential function uh, when you look uh, at the diffeomorphisms. Uh, uh, yeah, I should say uh, that phi t e phi three composed to psi t returns out that it's uh, a map of the same build, uh, is uh, original map phi. Let us also assume again that uh, the energy of phi is uh, finite. Uh, and it turns out then that uh, this uh, energy of phi t is differentiable, maybe when you take computer derivative of t is equal to zero, uh, what you obtain is uh, the integral over p of a uh, mm -hmm. integral this it's the trace uh, of a uh, Trace of B times A naught. Um, where B uh, is this uh, uh, the two by two matrix that you obtain by uh, uh, computing, uh, you know, taking the Jacobian of phi and multiplying it from the left by its transpose. Uh, and uh, where a zero uh, is equal uh, so a zero uh, is equal to the traceful part over 
tool um, of matrix A is uh, given by, uh, you know, kind of the first partials of uh, the vector field generating the flow. So partial one x1, uh, partial uh, one x2, the second component of the vector field, uh, partial two x1, partial two x2. So, there may be a vector of one half missing, but I actually don't think so. So, there was a, a, a good computation. Uh, there was a good computation. Let me also point out that last time when I stated this lemma, I included uh, as. Okay, no. <laughs> actually, let me not say that. Let me just try and get it right this time. So, uh, there's a, a consequence of this lemma that's important. Uh, and it's analogous uh, to the corollary of uh, uh, this first lemma that I stated uh, and I'm um, about to erase or erase just now. Uh, so you remember this expression. Uh, I guess you, you can also answer me why. So the question is again, what happens when this energy, um, um, when you have a map uh, on which you know it is least energy amongst all maps uh, with the same boundary values, so uh, you know, it, uh, it should also. Just a moment, please. I'm going to put my name back. Uh, so uh, it's a corollary. Uh, assume so a corollary of the previous lemma. Assume that d by dt. Zero uh, of its uh, uh, energy of five t is equal to zero uh, for all for all t fields is in the statement of the previous lemma. Uh, for all, actually, I should say uh, for all um, vector. Then phi uh, is weakly conformal. So then uh, uh, phi is weakly conformal. So I e, uh, this matrix B. E, um, So uh, let me uh, so 
for this cohort, we, we, we still have to work a little bit. Uh, so yeah, let me make a, a, a short remark here. It's to remind me of complex notation. Uh, so uh, we call that partial z uh, of phi, the complex derivative of z is a half, uh, of phi is one half partial one phi minus i times partial two of phi. We call that uh, uh, the uh, length of, uh, I'm sorry, it's not the length, but if you scalar multiply this complex valued uh, vector field uh, with itself, what you get is a quarter. Um, uh, I'm sorry, what you get is uh, uh, alpha plus i beta, where alpha is um, uh, a quarter uh, times uh, partial 1 phi squared minus partial 2 phi squared. So say, so saying that uh, you know the conclusion that phi is weakly harmonic uh, will be established by showing that uh, um, uh, actually partial c phi uh, is equal to zero. First thing we do is um, uh, uh, is uh, uh, is to replace with uh, uh, vector fields um, uh, x uh, that are smooth um, and vector supported. Isms that keep the boundary in place, the boundary rings uh, in place. Um, and then uh, we know by assumption that zero, uh, zero is equal to the integral. So, so let me, uh, so at least the half has already gone, so zero is the integral of p. So this trace of p um, times uh, the trace free part of a. Um, it would, um, hmm. I wonder if I want to do it, but if you think about it, uh, so let, let's just think for a moment. Um, so this is a uh, trace. Well, we take the the the, the, the uh, you know entry in you know top row uh, first column uh, of b uh, times a transpose. So that would be um, uh, that would be I guess um, partial. Uh, um, um, uh, an 
nachher eben schön das so Gefühl der Wahl oder Verarscherung. So I guess what this means, if I'm collecting uh, terms, uh, this would be So if I'm uh, looking at all the terms um, that are multiplying uh, something to do with, uh, with x I know what has to happen, but uh, why does it actually happen? Hmm. But actually, I want to, just out of general principle, I want to collect uh, all the terms um, you know, that have something to do with, uh, with x1. So this would be partial 1. Yes. 
So we haven't even used, this was just for reorganizing terms, we haven't even used the excess completely supported yet uh, in the unit list. But when you think about uh, this equation now, uh, or, or, or this identity, so this is supposed to vanish for all uh, 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 vector terms x of uh, compact support uh, in the unit list. Actually, what this means on the nose is that uh, uh, Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied neatly uh, for alpha and beta. Riemann equation, so partial home of alpha is equal to uh, partial uh, uh, minus partial 2 uh, uh, over beta and partial uh, one, uh, uh, 2 of alpha, uh, partial 2 of alpha is equal to partial. X2 are completely supported, and if alpha and beta, which are priori will only know to be continuous, if they were continuously differentiable, uh, then this would follow by a standard principle of calculus of variations. So holding weakly <laughs> means exactly uh, this. Um, that's all it. Uh, uh, that's all it means. Uh, but uh, just as we uh, have had uh, seen with Weil's lemma. Um, uh, this actually implies that uh, uh, alpha and beta are in fact smooth uh, and harmonic and in fact complex conjugate to one another. One way to see this would be uh, to take uh, for x1 and x2 derivatives uh, of, uh, of functions and then you can reduce this result that I've just asserted uh, to the usual So this is this is what he does. So this is uh, this uh, uh, implies. Uh, so this implies in a, uh, alpha plus i beta uh, uh, is holomorphic. Um, so in particular. Sorry, so this is a. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, give me a moment, please, because this can't. Is okay. So, um, and we call alpha plus i beta, uh, what this is, is partial z and phi squared. So, actually, what we are uh, aiming to prove is that uh, uh, alpha and beta both vanish identically. Uh, so, hello, we had some uh, technical problems here. Uh, so, we have restored. Uh, so, so, what is the picture? 
Uh, so we are, uh, we know that alpha inhibit uh, are holomorphic functions. We know uh, in particular that uh, uh, they are uh, harmonic. Uh, in the, yeah. So that is uh, the first part of the proof. And before uh, we start on the second part of the proof, uh, I would like uh, to give you a brief heads up on uh, an elementary fact that we are going to, uh, to use. Um, so, um, so it's just an aside, uh, an intervener. Uh, so we'll be interested in the imaginary part uh, of the quantity Z square times partial Z uh, of Y uh, squared. So uh, let's quickly think about what, uh, what, what that is. So let, let me just, uh, uh, let's just first recall this partial Z phi squared is uh, 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 alpha plus i beta. We know this is a, uh, a holomorphic uh, function, so in particular Z squared times uh, 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 partial Z phi squared is, is again holomorphic as the product of holomorphic function. Uh, Z squared, uh, uh, I would like to write uh, as the real and, uh, you know, uh, as real and imaginary, as a combination of real and imaginary part, the real part uh, of the square of the complex number is its real part squared minus uh, its imaginary part squared, and then uh, two times the product of real and imaginary. So, um, uh, including uh, this product, and uh, then take the imaginary part, uh, uh, the result will be uh, 2 times x1 plus x2 times uh, alpha uh, plus uh, uh, x1 uh, squared minus x2 squared times beta. So, just to, uh, to get that set continue with the proof. So uh, step two uh, of uh, the proof uh, of uh, uh, this corollary. Step two uh, is uh, 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 so the goal is to show Zero. Um, so this is what we are uh, what, uh, want to do. Uh, and in order to show this, uh, we are going to uh, we are going to um, use uh, different uh, families of different morphisms uh, to generate uh, reparametrizations uh, of our gate phi. Uh, so we are going to use different Perpendicular to position uh, everywhere, in fact, in particular uh, on the boundary. So this is a uh, this is a scalar model. Uh, so uh, uh, if we use these uh, vector fields to generate different morphisms, then we parametrizations of phi and then differentiate uh, energy uh, along along these maps. Uh, then uh, what is it that we uh, that we obtain? So we know that zero is equal to, uh, uh, yeah, so this is from our lemma, is equal to uh, the integral. And I'm going to copy the same expression that, uh, that we had uh, before. So alpha times partial one, uh, x1 uh, one minus partial uh, two x2 two plus beta uh, times partial one. Uh, uh, 
Okay, uh, so this is uh, this is the formula that we call this thing. So what we did previously was um, to, to argue using this identity uh, that we have compactly supported uh, components x1 and x2 uh, that this identity implies that alpha and beta satisfy the cauchy riemann equations, which uh, ends are in fact smooth functions that are harmonic and complex conjugate with one another. So now when we're using uh, x, uh, you know, uh, uh, vector fields that are not completely supported in the domain. So even if alpha and beta were smooth up to an including uh, uh, the boundary uh, integrating by parts, uh, we would pick up boundary terms. The good news is uh, we wouldn't pick up interior terms integrating by parts. So integrating by parts where you get an interior term when the partial one hits uh, alpha and you have a sign change. Uh, same with the other derivatives and the, the, the beta. Um, but those we already know vanish because alpha and beta are uh, satisfied with Cauchy Riemann equations. So these interior terms vanish, but we would in general pick up boundary terms. And uh, so what? You know, uh, now we don't know that alpha and beta are smooth up to and including the boundary, so we have to fiddle a little bit. Uh, this is not hard. Uh, so this is. Uh, you can check this, so this is a real analysis. Uh, this is the integral uh, of the, uh, uh, of, I'm sorry, uh, a limit of uh, integrals over uh, the sphere centered at the origin uh, and radius r. Uh, so what are the boundary terms that we are picking up? So the derivative terms with respect to the first variable turns into uh, the first component of the upper 20 unit normal, so this will turn into uh, x1 divided by r, so if you want, divided by r, it's not really easy, uh, times, so, and then x1 evaluated on the boundary, that would be minus x2 uh, times f. So it turns out uh, that uh, uh, this is alpha times uh, minus, uh, 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 minus uh, uh, x1 times x2 times x1 times uh, and thinking minus x2 times x1 uh, multiplied by f uh, plus uh, what happens with the other term? Uh, so that would be beta. This is a min, um, I'm sorry, this is a plus uh, x1 divided by r uh, times uh, uh, x1 divided by f. So this is x1 squared, the uh, remaining term is minus x2 squared. So this uh, actually turns out uh, uh, to result in the following uh, statement. I need to clear the board. So if you look at the integral, it's exactly uh, the imaginary part uh, of uh, z times uh, partial z of phi uh, squared. And, uh, uh, times if. Um, so actually, uh, uh, what follows is that zero is equal to the limit SR takes uh, one uh, of uh, the integral SR uh, F times the imaginary part of uh, Z times partial Z by So now, no, this, this is a harmonic function. This holds for any function f uh, with complete support uh, in all of our two. So any complete function, uh, com uh, any smooth function f uh, from the point of view of uh, this uh, this boundary uh, circle. So what we are what we know is that we, we take this uh, this one harmonic function 
um, multiplied with any function uh, f uh, and compute this boundary integral, then we always get uh, um, then we always get zero. Now it shouldn't come as a surprise that this means that the harmonic function itself uh, is equal uh, to zero. Uh, and, uh, there are many ways of uh, of uh, proving this uh, from this statement. about it, a general thing, they have a harmonic function, and you know, if you uh, smooth uh, uh, on, on, on the inside of the unit disk, uh, but possibly not up to the boundary, and you know there are these limits of that flux integral against functions, uh, any, any function f is equal to zero, uh, then the function itself. vanishes when the function uh, is a real constant and now this holomorphic function here uh, it's uh, you know it vanishes at the origin it, it vanishes when it is equal to zero uh, so this implies that uh, the holomorphic function itself is equal to zero so alpha is equal to theta is equal to zero and uh, um, this means that uh, alpha is with Sorry, quickly harmonic, quickly conform. Maybe unfortunate, you know, to call this weakly conformal, but there's also weakly harmonic, which is a, a very different, different type of motion. Okay, so let me uh, take this off. So now uh, I'd like. To use the remaining time uh, for a discussion uh, of uh, actually, I, I think a rather intriguing discussion uh, that is encapsulated in a result called the Lima and the Big Lima, and it's on the mm -hmm, uh, equicontinuity of boundary values um, of functions uh, with boundary Dirichlet energy. A priori uniformly found it. So, um, uh, okay, so I uh, returns. Suppose I have a, uh, a simple closed curve in Rn. So it's a simple uh, closed curve. Um, um, and suppose that a gamma Weak parameter. 
parametrization of uh, uh, lowercase gamma is a weak parametrization of the curve gamma uh, itself. So uh, uh, let me explain to you what this means. So I suppose that gamma from this to Ra uh, is uh, a weak uh, parametrization of gamma from the circle with uh, so two things are true so uh, its image is all of gamma and it's not so it's subjective onto gamma uh, and uh, uh, it's not so usually we require parametrizations to be injective uh, so it turns out that it's a little too restrictive uh, at this point uh, so we're looking at parametrizations that are, uh, or rather, such continuous maps whose images all of uh, gamma uh, that are weakly monotone, uh, continuous map uh, in such that uh, uh, for every uh, point P in gamma, uh, the pre-image uh, of that point P uh, is immutable. So, you know, what are the connected subsets uh, of the circle? Uh, so, you know, it's either the entire circle or just uh, images of uh, intervals. So, let's say it's always an image of an interval under the standard map that takes, you know, R uh, uh, to the union circle, you know, cosine theta, sine theta. Mm -hmm. So, this is uh, uh, what this means. And uh, so, whenever I have a, uh, you know, a, a point, on the unit circle, uh, its pre-image, uh, so there is a pre-image, right? there is a pre-image uh, of P, but it could actually be uh, that uh, the pre-image of P is an entire interval. So on that interval, uh, the net lowercase gamma would be constant and equal to P. And if you think about it, uh, if you think about uh, what this means, so when you are traversing, uh, so when you, you know, uh, this is a pre-image of P, so if, you know, gamma of, say, 1 is equal to P1, and you know, you go further, and uh, you know, here's a point P2 that are, uh, you know, outside of this pre-image interval, uh, I'm sorry, say, 2, gamma of, say, 2 is equal to P2, over here, then uh, uh -huh. so um, you know P two can again have multiple pre images, but say it, it just as a single one pre image of P two is exactly uh, Z two. So one thing that cannot happen is that when you are moving uh, from Z one to Z two uh, on the unit circle, uh, you are either moving uh, along this path uh, of uh, the curve uh, gamma. On the other part, what you cannot do is uh, jump in between. So you cannot jump from P1 uh, to P3. Uh, to some, you know, to P4 uh, uh, to P2. That would be impossible. Uh, then you would have uh, disconnected pre-images. So this is a, a, a very sensible uh, notion, and also. You know, call it uh, weakly monotone uh, parametrizations. Uh, weakly monotone parametrizations. So, you know, the, so in a, a basic result uh, about such weakly monotone uh, parametrizations that I'm leaving to you to prove it's a real analysis. Okay? So, suppose you have a gamma, gamma 1, gamma 2, and sigma two gamma. All of these uh, are weak parametrizations of the same uh, same as gamma. Of gamma, uh, um, such that uh, gamma i converges to 
I'm sorry. Gamma out here, so these are weak parametrizations of gamma, in such that gamma i uh, converges uh, to some uh, gamma from this to our in uh, uniformly. And then the statement of the lemma is that also this linear DNA of gamma is, um, uh, is, a, is a weak parametrization. Sorry, the, the lemma of Courant, uh, uh, Courant Lebec. Uh, so this is probably so this is the lemma. So uh, then uh, there exists uh, a radius in any such setting, there exists uh, uh, a radius r uh, that lies between eta uh, and the square root of eta, so in particular positive and smaller than 1. So notice eta is less than 1, so the square root of eta is bigger uh, than eta itself, uh, such that when I'm uh, computing the energy uh, of phi, I'm sorry, not the energy of phi, uh, but the Fokker integral. So I'm taking uh, this, uh, the, this, uh, the circle of radius r and saying that it's w, and I look at the part of it that lies inside the disk, and I'm computing uh, the integral over you know, this curve, this segment curve. Uh, of uh, the length of the uh, gradient of phi. Uh, the square of this quantity here is less than or equal again to phi pi times the energy of phi divided by the logarithm of eta absolute value. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Is a, uh, a consequence uh, that is, uh, you know, that I would like to include in uh, the statement before I draw a picture. Thank <laughs> you. 
particular in particular uh, when you look at phi of uh, omega uh, w1 minus phi of w2 uh, squared the distance of these two images is less than or equal phi times phi energy of phi so this is a finite quantity and we'll be looking at maps phi uh, whose energy is a priori bounded by some number, say a hundred million, uh, but you know, bound once and for all and divided by uh, the modulus of the logarithm of eta. So notice when eta, eta will be a small quantity for us, so the logarithm of eta will be uh, large in the absolute values, uh, will you know, <laughs> go to zero as eta, um, and go to infinity as eta. Zero. Uh, so and this is where uh, W1 and W2, uh, these are the points of intersection of uh, the circle with uh, the unit disk. So that's the picture. So say there's W. So how does this conclusion uh, follow from this, uh, this lemma? So this uh, uh, the binding inequality in the fundamental theorem of calculus and if you want uh, integration and all line of you know, short curves. energy is bounded, right? Uh, it, it, it's telling you that in the neighborhood of every point, there are two points whose images under phi are close together. In this maybe, maybe not so surprising, but uh, you know, we, we only have uh, you know, uh, the, the, you know, the bound on, on the first derivative of, of phi, we only have is an output bound on the gradient. Um, so the proof of the quadrant epic lemma is a uh, it's really nice. I mean it's a, I mean it's really nice. It's, I mean I think what is nice about it is that uh, it's such a useful idea and uh, it, um, it just comes up in many places. Uh, and I I guess so Kuhlmann, I don't think uh, the and Kuhlmann get much overlap in their careers, so I, I suspect that historically um, this is maybe not a, a joint work, but a, or something. But uh, so how does it work? Um, so let me define uh, the quantity f uh, of um, f of uh, f, yeah, f is the f of r, uh, and f of r is the integral uh, of the gradient of phi uh, is r uh, uh, w intersected uh, the disk, the square of this. 
we want to show there is some r between eta and the square root of eta such uh, you know that we can bound uh, this quantity nicely. So more this that just by Cauchy Schwarz inequality, this is less than or equal the integral of the gradient phi squared is R W intersected B times uh, the length of this curve. Okay, the length of this curve. And the length of this curve is at most two uh, is at most pi times r. Right? It's uh, it's at most you know two pi r would be the full circle in the some r uh, uh, by this uh, quantity. So um, assume now that uh, uh, assume now that uh, uh, f of r is always bigger or equal um, um, Zero, that's certainly always uh, uh, that's always uh, true. Suppose suppose a is bounded, f of r is bounded below uh, by a. So, uh, but what would this uh, uh, what would this mean? So uh, this means uh, uh, by virtue of this uh, uh, this inequality that are. Uh, divided by r is less than or equal to uh, the integral this r w intersected t uh, of gradient phi uh, squared times pi. This radii are um, um, and um, no, uh, if this is true for every r in this interval, then this will uh, also hold true. Uh, the square root of eta. Part of the right hand side, uh, this would be a uh, um, just by co area formula, uh, this would be uh, uh, exactly uh, the uh, two times pi. times pi times the integral of n phi squared. So this is equal to 2 pi 1 half. Uh, so this would be e intersected. Um, um, so this would 
the, uh, uh, the date such that um, um, this angular region, um, this would be the disk of radius. So if A is a lower bound uh, for F, F of R, uh, for all R uh, in this interval, More fun with students. Um, so this means that uh, so this means so if uh, a is the lower bound f of r for all r in uh, the interval eta square root of eta, um, then uh, a is less than or equal to. Uh, less than or equal uh, uh, 4 pi uh, times uh, e, uh, the energy of pi uh, divided by the modulus of logarithm of the So if I have a lower bound for f of r that holds for all uh, r, a lower bound must be smaller than this quantity. Put another way, <laughs> if I have a quantity A that is bigger than that quantity on the right, then this must be violated at some point. So, um, so you know, if you think about it logically, uh, there exists uh, a value of R. f of r uh, and that is the integral s r uh, w intersecting the disk gradient of phi uh, uh, squared is uh, uh, actually uh, uh, is less than less than or equal to let's take something that is bigger maybe it's the Maybe energy of phi is equal to zero or zero, and then phi has to be constant anyway. The lemma is trivial. So, this is just, you know, does this really go up? Four pi to five pi. Um, okay, so uh, that's uh, the Kurban Kirbek lemma. In, the, in, uh, uh, in next week's class, we are going to put everything together, and uh, it will come out very nicely, and it will be. I look forward to having my students back. Bye.